What's going on growers? It's James Pagioni coming to you live from Jersey. Eight years ago I started planting fruit trees in my backyard with the goal of creating a food forest. Through the years the gardens have provided me and talk with more food and joy than we could have ever imagined. It's a good feeling knowing that if I don't plant anything this year I'll still have plenty of food. And the best part about the whole thing is anyone can do it. Let's go! Me and Tuck want to take all of you through the three food forests on this property that I planted. All of them specialized for different reasons and all planted at different times. This way you can see the natural progression of a food forest. One that's eight years old, one that's just a few years old. Let me take you into the eight year old one. There are a number of great things about a food forest. One of them I hinted at at the intro. It's this idea of food security. The perennials in this garden act as a form of food insurance. For me basically if I don't plant anything I'll be in perennials from March all the way to November. Let me bring you right here to these asparagus right here these ones I planted years ago they're gonna keep producing and they were starting to pop them up in March I just cut and eat them so again planted it once always feeding me this whole idea of food insurance you'll notice there's not many wood chips where the asparagus are that's because in the winter what we like to do is cover the asparagus to keep them mulched and keep them nice and warm and then when the spring comes we remove that mulch this way the ground heats up the asparagus won't pop out of the ground until the soil temperature is a certain temperature. So that's why we like to move the wood chips, heat it up quick. You'll notice that there aren't that many asparagus here because we've been eating a lot of them. Some of them have bites off the top too because that's Tuck. He loves coming in and harvesting them himself. Hey Tucky, want an asparagus boy? Sometimes he'll come in on his own and just grab them. Want an asparagus boy? He sees them like this. He knows what they are. He usually goes for the tops because I guess those are the sweetest or something, his favorite part. But it's funny because uh, you know, I'll be out working in the garden. I turn around and all the tops of my asparagus are basically gone because Tuck ate the top. One thing we'll say though is they definitely didn't go to waste. This guy is getting the full value out of them, really enjoying himself out here, and so are we. Let me show you this persimmon tree right next to me. This is the tree that we'll be eating fruit on in November. How crazy is that? Perennial fruit from March to November, and I live in zone 7A, so it's not like I live in zone 10 or something. Behind me here, you can see a hazelnut tree. This thing has gotten monster. We're looking for buckets of hazelnuts on it this year, and I've noticed this year more than maybe any other, there are so many ladybugs on all my different kinds of plants. Notice there's a ladybug hanging on this one here and there's so many more throughout the garden. The foundation for my garden are perennials, but that doesn't mean I don't have annuals planted. You'll see in this video, I plant plenty of annuals. When it comes down to annuals, it's like the more work you put into it, the more you get. That's one reason I love them. You'll notice right here, we've got this fig tree, the one I wrapped in the winter, looking great, got some young buds on it, shows it's healthy. To the left of me here, we've got a new pear tree that we just put in, loaded with fruit, you love to see it. Right next to me here, cherries. This is a new black tartarian cherry we put in. It's relatively young, but it's got a number of fruit on it. It's looking really good, really healthy. We got this one because we wanted to help pollinate our big cherry tree. So when you're planting cherry trees, apple trees, most trees in general, a lot of time you need a pollinating tree. So make sure if you're planting fruit trees, you make sure you get pollinators. Now I want to bring you through this eight year old food forest from a first person perspective, almost like you're walking through it on your own. On my right here, we have the greenhouse. We put this in a couple years ago, we built it. It's been excellent for us for starting plants and all different things like that. Right here above me, we can see the grape trellis, and that's provided a lot of grapes for us. We've got the Catawba grape on the right, and I believe it's the Thompson seedless on the left. Straight ahead of me, we've got one of my favorite grapes right here. This is the Concord grape. The color is stunning, the taste is amazing, and we've got that trellis stub right in the middle of the garden. To the left of me here is the Prigioni apple. If you follow the channel, you know what this is. Here's an apple tree that we started from seed. It produced fruit for us. We get the fruit on it. It's delicious, it's a little small, but man, is it good, such a treat. Right here, we've got some peach trees, some old peach trees. Look at the size of those guys. You can see how we pruned them to an open center to get plenty of light. We're in New Jersey here, so we're in zone 7A. We've got a lot of humidity, so we make sure we do things to open up light and airflow. To the right of me here, we've got some raspberries that are about to flower. So we'll be producing soon. So we go from asparagus over to strawberries, which we're producing soon, then raspberries, then black half raspberries, then blackberries, peaches, pears, plums, I mean, we got it. You name it, we got it. It's a lot of fun coming out here. And that's why I love the season so much. Every season brings a different fruit, a different treat. Blackberries there. Uh, another apple tree right ahead of me. Here's an almond tree right here. The all-in-one almond. So this is the almond that actually pollinates itself, self-pollinating. It's got a few almonds on it. Should be a lot of fun to eat those. Tucks in, the, in there playing with the bees, chasing the bees around. And we're all just having so much fun now that it's spring. 
the nice weather is here and the investments that we've made throughout the years are truly starting to pay off so it's just been a, a blast to be able to share it all with you all and let's move over to this rhubarb right here looking nice got a bunch of plum trees in the back there are rows of plums some currants down there there's an old relic plum tree i call that a pear tree in both food forests we have an old pear tree it's a relic and i like to keep it in there for a reason because the pear tree shows what the food forest was and now we have a picture of what it is right now and then there's an idea of what it will be and that's uh that's the vision so we're always trying to work towards that vision and we've got some raspberries right here i've got a new box of beds and you can see we've got all potatoes all coming up in there a uh, new cherry tree i just put in a gold cherry flowering looking fantastic a uh, new peach tree right uh, an older peach tree actually right here looking real well also and the queen of the food forest as usual the the bing cherry i know that there are a number of you out there that are on the fence about starting a garden or even expanding the one that you do have i'm here to tell you get off the fence let this be the year that you put a garden in convince yourself that it's necessary to have one make food quality a priority to you and you'll have to start a garden you don't have to go huge when you start you know just put a fruit tree in and call it a food forest not because it is one yet but it will be one in the future let me bring you over to the other food forest the three-year-old one looking great a question i often get is james how do i start a food forest where do i get started well if you want something that looks like this a beautiful food forest it's relatively still young i've got a whole series on it how to start a food forest from scratch from phase one all the way to about phase five or six you can see some young fruit trees we just put in a couple years ago strawberries below my feet here blueberries over here more peach trees all disease resistant good varieties then you'll notice i added some raised beds in here for a lot of my annuals i'll be planting cucumbers up all, all along here and i've got plenty of brassicas planted you'll see the strawberries too those are all flowering soon we'll come out and put the red rocks around the strawberries like you've seen in the past to help deter the birds what's the difference though between a food forest and a regular garden well the idea of a food forest is that we occupy different layers of space there's seven layers in a food forest so for instance right here we've got our ground cover this is all strawberries inedible obviously and then we move up a little bit to a different layer we've got a fruit tree right here a peach tree a nice one over here we've got yet a different layer your bush layer with a blueberry right here and then we move over to here we've got grapes that vining layer so again all these different layers of space something's going to grow there we just want to make sure that we grow something we want for instance food that's why it's a food forest and not just a forest it's basically the same elements of a forest we're just replacing those with food people ask me a lot of time about permaculture is it confusing all different questions when it comes down to it permaculture it's very simple it's nothing new it's just taking all these old principles and blending them together having them all work together in a form of harmony and cooperation that's why we design a food forest we don't just put things in and hope that they work let me bring you over to these blueberries right here it almost looks like one plant but there's actually two here and i planted them this close on purpose the one here is a pink lemonade variety which means it has pink berries the other one is a patriot so it's got dark blueberries the two next to each other when they're fruiting it's going to look pretty cool the contrast it's almost going to look grafted i think that's exciting next to me right here i've got an asian pear tree i've got a number of pear trees pear trees do the best for me in new jersey because of that they are the foundation of my fruit trees in the garden knowing that i'm going to get good fruit from them almost every year and i don't really call it a fruit tree i'd rather call it something like an investment in my future health and wellness uh, the seeds of opportunity for a better diet choice let me bring you over to the square foot garden where we have a lot of annual stuff planted another way the food forest provides a form of food security for me is because of the high level of diversity if an apple tree doesn't do good i've got pear trees or i've got plum trees or cherry trees so this whole idea that there's always something that's going to thrive and do well for me and probably there's always something that's not going to do great that year in this section i've got all my annuals though another layer of incredible amount of food right here you can see all these uh spinaches that we planted recently i showed you guys how we did that in the video coming along nicely all these carrots they all came up excellently we've got a few different tricks on how to get carrots germinated well all of our brassicas you can see the cabbages and stuff here a lot of nice onions behind that then we've got some bok choy our asian greens we've got some lettuces mixed into there a few different kind of kales and all different things so we want to make sure we're growing a diverse number of things but i make sure the main things that i grow are things that i like to eat because i'm going to be the one eating it i have just a few more things i want to show you in this food forest then i'll move over to the other one as we move up here along all the fence lines in this food forest we've got grapes so as many grapes as you can fit we've got one there another one in front of me and then a third one at the end and i've got a few behind me as well 
You can see the squirrels are doing a lot of the work for us, planting the hazelnuts throughout the yard for us. So they take them and they replant them and they forget about them. And they grow into nice trees for us. Look at the size of this kale that grew throughout the winter. That thing is a monster. I'm not even sure the exact variety, but the amount of food that thing produced is insane. We've had a lot of peas planted. They're doing real well. And the radishes are almost finished, a number of them. I've got some black radishes, some unique ones with, that are red on the inside, so I'm excited to show some of those. But the other food forest is on the side of the house. It's got some incredible looking apples. I'm gonna bring you over there right now. And here's the final food forest right now. Sometimes we call this the side garden because it's on the side of the house, but we still try to get as much production as we possibly can. This food forest specializes in mainly berry production with a number of apple trees. Right here is my favorite variety of apple that we have. This is the Almada Red. It's a red flesh apple beautiful flowers the smell on the blossoms are excellent also and overall just a great one i've mentioned before variety selection is huge when you're planting fruit trees you want to make sure you get the right one in the first time below me here you'll notice we've got blueberries blueberries are the main staple in this berry production garden because blueberries grow so well in new jersey make sure you work with things that grow well don't fight against things that work so here another large blueberry plant Next to me here, we've got an apple tree. This one doesn't have as many blossoms. It looks pretty healthy, but you see behind me now, this wine sap, this thing is absolutely loaded. This is our most productive apple on the property and one that I just love the flavor of so much also. As I kneel down a little bit, you'll get the perspective on some of the size of these blueberries. They're big and they produce a lot. So when it comes to planting a fruit tree, everybody knows the best time to get a fruit tree in is seven years ago. The second best time is today. So if you're gonna get a fruit tree in, plant it today, plant the right variety the first time. It'll make a world of difference for you. As we move in the back more, we're gonna go back to berries, essentially. More blueberries here. Young blueberry plant, another blueberry, an Asian pear. Again, a lot of pear trees. The Asian pears tend to be my favorite pears. I like the flavor a little more than the Europeans. Then right here is my favorite kind of raspberries. These are the black cap raspberries. You'll notice this year I trellised them up a little better. This way, when we want to come and harvest, we've got a nice location we can get in here, grab the ones we want, and then get out. In the past, I didn't have this trellis, and it made it tough to get some of the berries in the back. So again, be a little smarter, designing things a little better, and increasing our production as a result. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got something out of it. I wanted to mention before I left, just a thank you to everybody for all the birthday wishes for Tuck. Just recently, it was his 10th birthday on April 27th and the amount of happy birthdays he received it was honestly mind-blowing to know how much you genuinely care about Tuck and the garden and the whole channel and everything it, it honestly means so much to us and we're really thankful to have you guys a part of this whole journey that we've been on and I'll tell you what I said it so many times and it's the truth Tuck is the true MVP of the channel if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And if you wanna support the channel, something you can do that's free and easy, next time you order on Amazon, whenever you order on Amazon, use our affiliate link. It's down in the description tab. It won't cost you anything, and it gives us a little piece. We'll see you in the next one. Talking James, we out.